Praise the Lord. I have a little bit of a boom in here. Maybe cut down just the volume a little bit. Maybe it's too much bass. Praise God. Well, good to have you here today. And we're going to continue on what we started last week. We, we went to Paul's scripture where he says that I remind you by, you know, I, I remind you those things, put you in remembrance of some things. So today as we're preaching and teaching on faith, these are things that you've heard over and over and over. We learned last week, though, faith comes by what? By hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. The more you hear the Word of God, the more your ears get tuned to hear more of the Word of God. You have to be repetitive in hearing God's Word because we, were, we, we have to reprogram our mind. We have to reprogram the way we think. And it takes a while for us to get a hold of what God is really saying. Our mind, you know, the mind, the Bible says that Satan blinds the minds of those who believe not. So he has a little bit of access to our mind, not our spirit, but our mind. So we have to really resist him in our minds. So we have to continue to let go. And the Bible says a carnal mind, the mind that's not submitted to God, is enmity or, or what? It is his enemy. So our minds will actually defy God and come against God. The Bible says, a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end leads to what? Death or separation from God. So God wants us to get our mind renewed. And faith has to be heard over and over and over. So let's go into some things about faith. Let me start today by saying that real and lasting faith demands spiritual integrity. There has to be an amount of integrity involved in God and believing God. You have to be real with God. There are certain things that I cannot believe for. That are way, Paul says, I don't regard those things that are too high for me. There are certain things that are way, way beyond my trying to be super spiritual. I, if, if, you're, if I'm going to help you as a pastor, quit trying to believe for those things way out there and start believing the things that you have right at your grasp right now. As long as you're taking a hold of things and doing the things that you can do, you know, it's like this. Remember the man that was in the uh, synagogue one day, and Jesus was in there, and the, 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 the Pharisees were so religious and so forth, and wanted to see if they could catch him at doing something wrong, working on the Sabbath day. And they were upset because he's about to heal a man on the Sabbath day. And the man had a withered hand, a hand that was crippled. It was, he, it was, it was, he was, uh, it was drawn up, and he couldn't use his hand. And what's the first thing Jesus said to him? He says, stand forth in the midst. Now, let me ask you a question here. Was anything wrong with his legs? No. Jesus asked him to stand up. And that's what faith is all about. It always starts with doing what you can do. It starts with doing the easy things. So faith, he said, just stand forth in the midst. Stand up in the midst of the people here. And the man stood up. And then after he stood up, Jesus then did something that, that only God could do. He did what he could do. And now the man did what God could do. And he put forth the effort to stretch forth his hand. When he did, his hand just went totally out and was completely healed. You see, faith begins with doing the will of God. First of all, God says, stand up. You stand up. Now, if he hadn't stood up, he would have never got healed. That's right. He had to do what he could do. Yes. He had to obey God in the thing he could do. Yes. And when he did that, then God, and he, and he continued. Faith is a continuous, isn't it? Everybody said, the just shall live by faith. It's not a one-time splash in the pan. You know, it, 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 it's a flash in the pan. It's not just a one-time deal. God wants you to continually live a lifestyle of faith. So he carried on by the next step. The next step was do something now you couldn't do. God will never ask you to do something you can't do unless he provides the means to do it. Yes. When God commands you to be holy, there's no way you can be holy. But, but you can be holy because if he commands you with his command becomes his enabling. So God's word is filled with commandments. God's word is filled with things that we must do. Now, if God says you must do that, then can you do it? Yes. Even if it's impossible, if God says you must, like it's impossible to be holy, but God says you must be holy. So if God says you must do something, then you're able to do that if you obey him. And it comes from just being uh, faithful to hearing the word of God and then doing those things that you know you can do. So let's, 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 let's think about something. Well, let, let me just review last week. In 2 Timothy, I don't have it on, up there on the screen, chapter 1, verse 5, Paul spoke of genuine faith. What is, this is what I'm reviewing from last week. Genuine faith, sincere faith, unfeigned faith, he said. So if there is a genuine faith, then there's a disgenuine faith, is there not? 
There's a faith that people say, well, I believe God. Well, you haven't been to church in 15 weeks. Or 15 months or 15 years. I, I was once talking to a lady. She said, my mother has a lot of faith. She had cancer. I said, she should come to church. You know, she needs to receive faith. Oh, my mother's a woman of God. She, 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 she has faith. I said, when's the last time she's been to church? When's the last time she's heard the word of God? See, faith isn't a pride thing. Faith isn't a thing about, oh, I have faith. I'm, I'm, not, I'm just as good as anybody else. I have faith just like you do. It's not a pride thing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. So she was upset because I said, well, your mother needs to come to receive faith. And it was all about a pride thing. See, we're not worried about pride. We're not worried about what, where you are super spiritual, if you're spiritual or not spiritual. All we want is get you work and get faith work in your life. And faith comes by what? Hearing. And faith works by what? By love. If you're not able to come to church, then that tells me you don't have a whole lot of love for your church and for people in the body of Christ. So your faith isn't working very good. Did you hear me? Now, there are spurts of things God will do for people who are not, you know, God will help. I've had sinners get healed just more. I've had sinners just come to me and get saved and heal. I mean, I mean, I get saved, just get healed and never get saved because they believe God. But for the most part, if you're going to live a life of faith, you're going to have to start out and start being faithful to God. Is that right? So God's always wanting, if you apply his word, God will answer you. And you, you use faith, whether no matter where you are spiritually, it'll work for you. But I don't want to just have flash in the pan faith that works every once in a while. I want to be able to walk in faith. The just shall live by faith. All right, so genuine faith, faith is something we need. Well, if we're, not, if we're going to know, know what genuine faith is, we have to know what faith is. So open your Bibles up now to Hebrews chapter 11. It tells us to please God. We must learn how to operate in faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. We know that from verse number 6 of Hebrews chapter 11. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Who wants to please him? There's no way you can please God except for through faith. See, you've got to believe God's word. God wants you to depend upon him, does he not? He doesn't want you to depend upon your own reasoning or your own strength or your own abilities. He wants you to trust in him. The Bible says without him, you can do nothing, nothing that's really worthwhile in your life. You are complete in him. So he says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. So if we're going to have faith, we're going to have to please. I mean, if we're going to please him, we have to have faith. Now, if you don't know what faith is, most people think faith is just believing God. There's a lot more to faith than just believing God. The devils believe, but it doesn't do any good. Believing God changes your lifestyle. Yes. Believing God has works. James says, if, if I'll show you my works by what I, I mean, my faith by my works. So faith is a combination of a lot of different things, and it all works through love. It works through you loving God, you loving people. So when you, if you're going to know what, to, 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 without faith is impossible to please him, what really is faith? Now, if you keep reading this verse here in verse 6, he's going to describe an element of faith. Now, let me say this to you. Faith is not complex, but it's like a diamond. It's got different facets. You girls love diamonds, you know. The, you turn it this way and the light shines this way. So faith is a lot of things. We know it's a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But also here's another aspect of faith, another facet of the same diamond called faith. It's a beautiful thing. And that's why you need to keep hearing the word of God concerning faith and the simple things. Because faith is substance and faith is the things we hope for and it is what the, that's the definition. But it also, this describes faith as well. So without faith it's impossible to please him. Listen to me. For he that comes to God must believe that what? He is. Everybody say he is. Yes. What does believing God is do to your faith? What does it do to you? First of all, everybody say he is. He is. He, everybody say he is. He is. Didn't say you are. Say he is. Everybody say he is. he is. Now you are because he is, but he is. Right. When you come to God, you believe that he is, which means He's the main ingredient. You're removing yourself from the equation as being the one that's the main topic here. You must believe that God is. If you're going to have faith, everybody say God is. God. What God says is true. What my mind is struggling with has nothing to do with what God's truth is. What struggles I have to believe God have nothing to do with who he is. 
He is Jehovah Rapha, period. Whether I'm wondering about it, worrying about it, in disbelief or not, He is. If you're going to believe God, it doesn't matter what your head says, no matter how your body screaming, it doesn't matter anything. Everybody say, He is. If you're going to have faith, He is. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord your righteous. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides for you. He is Jesus of Nazareth, the one who makes you whole. Everybody say, He is. When my body is sick, He is my wholeness. He is in my body. That takes the struggle away from me, gets me out of the equation. It makes all the other factors mean nothing because He is. You see how simple faith is? It's not that hard. It is a diamond. It's got different facets, but it's still just a diamond. It's just a piece, one piece. It's easy. You look at it, it's beautiful. You know, oh, I struggle to see that beautiful diamond shine. No, it shines on its own. Faith works on its own, doesn't it? Yes. It has a beauty of its own. It's, 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 it's a treasure of its own. Amen? Yes. You, you, you treasuring something like that. No, I, don't go that. I, don't, I don't go that way. Let's, let's get back into this. Let me get, let me get, let me get, I got another thought here. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. And what? He is. Everybody say he is. Must believe that he is and he is. He is what? A rewarder. How many, now if you're going to have faith, let me, let me stop here. If you're going to have faith, do you have faith on your merits or you have faith in what God's word says about you? Now your merits go up and down. One day you're on, one day you're off. One day you're doing good, one day you ain't doing so good. Amen. One day you're supersonic spiritual. Next day you're just fleshed out Amen. dummy. Amen. And God says a just will live by faith. That means you're going to have to trust God and quit trusting yourself. Cursed is a man, the Bible says, who trusts the arm of the flesh. So we got curses because we're trying to struggle. I'm going to struggle to believe God. Oh, shut up. Just shut up. He is. Yes. But see, and he's rewarded when you don't deserve a reward. That's right. What if God, what, do you feed your kids when they disobey you? Now, so they may miss a meal or something, they're going to starve. You go to bed without your supper, you know. Now, y'all, they don't do that today, but back when we were kids, you, 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 you just go to bed without your supper. Now, back then, supper was a little bit important as today, you know. Three meals, that was it. With five boys and a military family. Missing supper was a big deal. But listen to me. He's a rewarder of those that what? Diligently seek him. That's another stump, stumper. Well, I'm not diligently seeking him, so I guess I can't get reward. Oh, get off yourself. You see, you, know, you, just, got, you just forgot he is? You forgot he's a rewarder? Now, let's look at that word diligently real quickly. You ready to read some... Everybody say, Dennis looks like a Greek scholar this morning. <laughs> Dill, it means earnestly. Everybody say, he's just honest. Everybody say, genuine faith. Genuine faith. Earnestly. He's just honest. Sincerely. He's sincerely seeking. He's truly, he's not playing games. That don't mean you're, well, I'm just all out for God all the time. Well, sometimes you're just fleshed out on your easy chair eating bonbons. <laughs> you're relapsing and watching some of the old soap operas you shouldn't be watching anymore. All right. Huh? Help somebody. They're, they're, the, the worm turns, you know. <laughs> She's laughing because she knows what it is. <laughs> Bible better be verse says, a rewarder of those who make a serious search. Everybody say serious search for him. You got genuine faith. Genuine faith ain't about you being hokey pokey and you trying to be so perfect. Genuine faith means I need him and I need him bad. I need him real bad. I'm going to seek him honestly. I'm going to be honest with God. And when I mess up, I'm going to fess up. The Bible says if we if we if if we if, if we if we if we sin, he's fa we confess our sins. He's what faithful. He's faithful. He, everybody say he is. He is faithful. He is. When I'm unfaithful, everybody say he is. He is faithful, and he's just. When I'm not walking in justice and I'm not walking in righteous, he is. He stands in my place for me to what? To cleanse me from all unrighteousness. He comes and clears the slate off and lets me start all over again. There's that song again. 
Let's be start off every. How often do you let you start again? Every morning. And in, 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 in Troy's case, it's more than once a day. It's more than once an hour. It's usually about off pretty much. God has to, you know, he has to have a cart behind him to. Huh? <laughs> For extra grace. Amen. Now, I wasn't talking about his wife. Now, we could talk about her too, but we'll just leave her alone today. She look, does she look good today? Stand up, Debbie. Don't she look, does she look beautiful? Stand up, Debbie. Come on, stand up. Oh, come on now. If you fail to believe he's a rewarder, then when things get tough, you're going to miss out, aren't you? Yes. When you're messing up, you won't have faith. But the just live by faith, don't they? Yes. Continue to live by faith. Faith is something that's so easy, but it's something we struggle with because we're not always deservers. But he's the rewarder of those who sincerely, honestly, are really trying, doing their best, they're making mistakes along the way, but they're being honest with God as they do it, that He is a rewarder. Listen to me very carefully. This is a year, I can say this prophetically, this is a year that you better get a hold of this scripture here. God wants to reward His people. You say, Dennis, I don't really deserve this. You were hooked up to a foundation at this church. Yeah. My wife and I have served God for 35 years. Uh, we, and there's people here that have been serving God for 35 years. It's all because of His grace. Everything we've done for God is grace. God will reward you for all the good you've done. He will forgive you of all the bad you've done. That's right. God will, let me, let me, you, didn't get, you didn't catch it. God will reward you for all the good you've done, but he will forgive you for all the bad you've done. So if you'll believe that the rewards remain and the punishment has been dealt with because of the blood of Jesus Christ, then you have rewards in your future. If it isn't something you earned, it's something that you got from the being hooked up to the local church. If it isn't something you earned, it's something that, you, that happened what Paul did obedience because you're hooked up with Paul right now. You're hooked up with Jesus. Jesus always obeyed God and now your reward comes because Jesus earned it and Jesus deserves the reward that you have and you're a partaker of Christ you're a joint heir with Christ amen and you have the opportunity to, to receive everything that he has because of his blood shed for you and he gave you an inheritance everything that's his he shares with you so everybody say he's my rewarder right now this year I'm expecting God to bless me I expect healing I expect the promises of God to be fulfilled in my life. I have abundant life in Jesus' name. He came to give you abundant life, did he not? That's a reward for those who diligently seek him. Diligent, I mean, well, I'm just slaving and I'm just, that's works. But you're just being honest. And there's always works. There's always going to be works with faith because you, you have to follow up your faith and do the things you can do. Is that right? If he says stand up, you stand up. He says stretch with your hand, you stretch with your hand. But he's telling you what to do. You're just obeying him and he's the one that does the work through you. Are you listening to me? These are works of faith. And there's a reward coming to you. There's a reward coming to this church as well. The, the second thing now we want to talk about. Faith is God's method for victory in our lives. It's his method to bring victory in your life. If God, if, if you're going to walk in victory in a continual way in your life, you're going to have to learn to walk by faith and walk in a continuous level of faith. And, and I said something a while ago that God will reward you for your good deeds because, but he'll, and he'll forgive you of your bad deeds because you confess your sins. He's faithful. Are you listening to me? So reward is in your future. Your reward is in your now too. It's important to continue to di continue to diligently seek God. What are you doing? You're continually bringing, sowing seed for reward. Yes. So those times when you don't deserve the reward, you've sown seeds for the reward. Yes. Did you hear me? Yeah. There's moments in your life when you don't deserve things, but you're going to trust God because you've been serving God. You're confident. Your conscience is clear. Maybe you, didn't, maybe you messed up last week. Maybe you didn't do what was right the last, the last six months of your life. But you're going to have to just put that behind you and go on. So let's talk about faith now as faith pertains to, uh, uh, to uh, victory and how we maintain, everybody say maintain victory maintain. in our lives through faith. Turn to 1 John chapter 5, please. John, the apostle of love, was so good about showing us how to confess sins and to, uh, to, to 
to get a hold of God, to realize that Jesus was faithful no matter what. In verse 4, he says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Everybody say overcomes. The world is against you. Do you know that? This world is a crash course for destruction. It is a world that's cursed by sin. It, 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 it maybe doesn't have much personality, but it is still a force in your life. And the world is trying to destroy you because the world is cursed. And the, cur the curse is upon man in this world. This is a victory. Everybody say, this is a victory. That has overcome the world, even our faith. So here's another tidbit of faith. It's the victory. Everybody say, faith is a victory. It's a, it's a sub things hope for. We know that. We also know that he's the reward of those who diligently seek his faith. You know, he, so faith is a lot of different things. But faith is a victory. Verse 5. He, who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is. Everybody say, Jesus is. Jesus. Say it again. Jesus is. Jesus. Here, you get, here you go again. That he is. He's the reward of those who diligently seek him. Everybody say, Jesus is the Son of God. If you're going to walk in faith, victories of faith, you're going to have to realize that Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. Everything you do revolves around Him. Everything you do in word or deed, you do in the name of Jesus. A lot of people are trying to believe God for things, and trying to believe God for this, and believe God for ministry, and believe God for that, and believe God for that. And they're extending their faith out there in a lot of different directions, but the Bible says you must believe that He is... And all that he is Lord of your life. So to make faith easier, quit using a shotgun and start using a rifle that actually hits the target. A shotgun blows out there and hits a lot of things. You need to, you need to zero in on what you're doing. Amen. If you're working on d doing this for God, then do that for God. And there's other things that need to be done. But don't focus on everything. Focus on what you need to be doing in this moment here. Faith is the moment you're working. Everybody say faith is. Not going to be, but faith is. So whatever you're doing at that time, faith is a victory. What victory is it? You're doing what you're doing now in the name of Jesus. You're, you're doing it because Jesus is Lord of your life. And you, you do everything is under the Lord. And you're very meticulous, amen, about what you're doing. You're understanding that what you're doing is very important. If it's, if it's greeting at the door of the church, if it's, it's, if it's walking in McDonald's and somebody walks in, you open the door for them, you say hello to them, you smile to them, that is important. That is, that is something that, that gives you victory. Everything you do, Jesus is Lord. So when you understand that about faith, it helps you to understand uh, that you don't have to be so technical. You don't have to be so perfect. Everything you do, at a moment-by-moment -moment basis, you do in the name of Jesus. You know, it's hard for me to project in the future what I'm going to do. People tell me all the time, you have this vision. My vision right now is to follow Jesus right now. Yeah. That, that's a pretty much, my plate is full. Amen. I'm sorry, but I, my plate's pretty full every day. What do I do the next minute to serve Jesus? Yeah. Now, I know there's visions and there's long-term things we need to consider. We really do. We really do. But to get to those long things, those long-term commitments, if you're not taking care of the little things along the way, you'll never make it to those long-term things. So a lot of people are looking to the future, but Jesus is. Now, it's good to look to the future, but you have to, you have to maintain that Jesus is Lord. And, you know, a, a lot of people are thinking about ministries and anointing and different things that God called you to do. Everybody say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. When you realize it's all about Jesus, it's not about who you are. Amen. Amen. He is. Right. It's not about your calling. That's why the Holy Ghost said to me just a few weeks ago. He said, Dennis, I want you to forget who, what you're called to do. You're, you've been an evangelist. You've been a, you've been a, a, a pastor. You've been operating other offices in the fivefold ministry. But just forget about who you are. I want you to remove your identity of who you think you are to make room for who I am in your life. Yes. What did John the Baptist say? He must, I must decrease, but he must increase. He wasn't just talking about his life in the end. He thought that's just how all of us should be. We must decrease and quit trying to worry about what we're called to do, what we are, and start letting him just be Lord. Right. You know, your, your gift will make room for you if you use your gift on a daily basis. God will put you where you need to be. Put you before kings, but you've got to be faithful of the little things. 
I, I, had the, I told the Lord the other day, I said, if I have to pastor a church of 30, 40, 50, 60 people the rest of my life, I'll do it. It's, it's fine to me. I'm going to keep being faithful wherever I am. I'm just going to keep doing what I need to do. But I'm, I'll tell you what, right now I'm actively believing God. I'm stretching myself out there more this year than I ever have before. I, I, I believe wherever I go, when I go to these rodeo meetings, I'm, I'm loving on people. And I'm believing God to open doors for me. Just like that kid that broke his neck. And then, then Bill, Bill broke his neck. And we see all kinds of things that are happening there. Everywhere we go, we, we, we believe that God will project himself before us and go before us and prepare the way. And it, so I don't have to do anything. I, don't have, I just have to be what I am because of who Jesus is in my life. And let God be the one who does these things. And it just, when anytime you promote yourself or anytime you try to be something you're not, you're not walking in genuine faith. Come on, come on. That's right. Did you hear me? Anytime you have to make yourself feel good about yourself all the time, then you're not walking in genuine faith. You're making faith to be about you instead of about Him. Amen. So, b struggling to believe is not, is not faith that overcomes. You can't struggle to believe. You just know that Jesus is Lord in your life. And then focusing on Jesus is a key factor. If you're going to walk in faith, you've got to focus on Jesus. Every day I get up, I say, Lord, Lord, uh, do you have anything you want me to do? Anything specifically? And if not, I just keep doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And if somebody says, I want you to do this, I'll, I'll change and alter my course. But most of your life is doing repetitive things. Yes. If I could, could con convince our little brother over here, he's young. And it's hard for people when they're young. They don't, they're not used to settling into the boredoms of life. That's why youth get in a lot of trouble, because they get bored. Life can be boring, can it? Yes. I mean, it's the same thing. You've got to go to work. You've got to do this. You got to do this. You got to, something breaks down. You got to fix this. And it's like, you don't have time to do what you want to do. Well, welcome to this world. Amen. So the people who overcome are the people who understand those things. And they're willing to just let life, but, but we can get a rut too by doing that. Just by doing the same thing and expecting nothing more than that. Right. That's what I'm talking about too. We've been expecting no more. So we have to expect more. But while we're expecting more, we still have to take care of what's in front of us, don't we? And that's where a lot of people, they expect more, but they don't, then they quit taking care of what they have, looking to more. So it's important. The third thing I want to say to you about faith is, he's instructed us to live by faith as a lifestyle. I've, I've alluded to this several times. Let's read it in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What's the gospel? How Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose to death on the third day according to the scriptures. So I'm not ashamed of this gospel where it's a power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first, also for the Greek. Everybody say that applies to me then, doesn't it? For it is the righteous, for in it, the, in it, the gospel, the righteous of God is revealed from faith to faith, and it is written, the just shall live by faith. So what's he saying here? For it is a righteousness in it, in the gospel, is a righteousness of God, it's revealed from faith to faith. Everybody say faith to faith. So he says, for it is in it, in the gospel, the rights of God is revealed from faith to faith. The rights of God is revealed from faith to faith. There's le one level of faith that moves to another level of faith. This righteousness is revealed from one level of faith to the next level of faith. As you're doing what God says, and the Bible says, just shall live by faith. As you live by faith, you're going to see yourself moving from faith to faith, from faith to faith. One level of glory to another level of glory. Amen. You're doing what God told you to do. It's a lifestyle. It's something you do continually. As you're young in the Lord, you see miracles. You want to see God do great, fantastic things all the time, and that's good. He'll show you those things. But life is not just about flashes and lights and wonderful things happening all the time. The Bible says, He that's born of a woman is few of days and full of trouble. Jesus said, In the world you'll have trouble, but be what? of good courage. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. There are problems you have to learn to overcome. You don't use substance to hide from those problems. You don't use, you don't use other things to get your mind off of those things. You look trouble right in the eye. And you, amen? The Jesus has over, and you use your faith. You use the name of Jesus. And we're going to talk about that in just a second, how you use your, your faith against those troubles in this life. So it's a day by day of just doing what's right. You know, this isn't a fancy sermon, but if you'll listen to me, and you've heard this over and over, but if you'll do everything that's right every day, <coughs> you will start seeing yourself move from one level of faith to the faith. It may be slow. Those slow times when faith doesn't seem to be moving are it's time when God is putting integrity and character into your life. That's right. Yes. You don't have to cheat. Jesus is enough. That's right. <coughs> that's right. My faith is enough. 
I'm content in whatever state I'm in. I'm not content in staying there, but I'm happy serving God. No matter what happens, I am what? Steadfast. I'm unmovable. I'm always abounding in the work of the Lord. I'm still doing what I need to do. No matter what happens to my life, no matter what bad things happen. This last week, we've had some things we had to deal with. How many know we had some things to deal with? Amen. I, I, I've got this 55-gallon drum. I've got this big idea. I'm going to take 55 gallons. That's 400 pounds of water, isn't it? So I, I, I take it out, build me this platform, you know, and for it to sit on. And, and I'm fixing it. All of a sudden I drop it off and it hit on the spigot. Well, I, I put water in, but I didn't check it that much. So, so I haul this thing full of water out there to my dear lease. And I got all my platform out. I get off my butt truck and I put it in there and I open the thing up and look down there and I close it back up and water is dripping out of the faucet. All that work. And it's full of water. I got to turn all that water off and then I got to haul water back and... So I thought, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I got this idea. I'm going to Academy. I'm buying me four buckets, four seven-gallon buckets, and I can haul 40 pounds or 50 pounds. Forget that 55. I should have done it in the first place. I fixed the thing. I didn't get frustrated. Amen. I'll cut a hole out of the 55-gallon drum for water, and I'll make a trash barrel, which I needed anyway. Somebody say amen. amen. I'll make the best of what I had. So I'm out there, I'm throwing up, I'm almost, I'm hot, and I'm fixing stuff at the deer lease, and come home, and the, the septic system is clogged up, clogged up. And we're, we live in a mobile home, and we have to crawl up in there, and there's pipes and stuff, you know, and, and so I'm down there, and everybody's doing this, is man of faith. Man Holy Dennis, underneath the deal. <laughs> I'm being facetious, by the way. And all of a sudden, I pull this pipe off, and it's backing up. Everybody say, duh. Yeah. You know exactly what happened, don't you? I pull this pipe loose, and all that backup just gushed. And I'm right in front of it, and it all gushed, and it's all over me. And it is colorful. <laughs> it's not clear water. It's not gray water. And I'm under there, and I got something I'm unclogging it and I, my heart's beating this I'm hot and I got all kinds of stuff all over me you know what I had all over me and it was miserable under there and finally I got out on the I finally got it unclogged and uh, I got out and crawled out from under the, the crawl space there and we have some brand new carpet grass from we put in last year thank God it was like a bed I laid in that thing I just laid it for five minutes I couldn't even breathe my heart was pounding my chest I, I just laid there and I said praise the Lord praise the Lord I got it unclogged you know, a lot of people would, would be freaking out. Things are breaking down. Things are happening. Then I got my truck last week, and we were at the, remember, two weeks ago, and the air conditioner went out. Oh, yeah. So the air conditioner, my truck's going out. Now, there's a lot of things that are happening in life that things just break down. But also, we may have an edge of some spirit of destruction trying to come in here. There may be some things that Satan's lined up, too. So sometimes things are just natural. Things wear out. But, you know, even in, in Jesus' day, they walked to the desert for 40 years, and their shoes didn't wear out. Right. We can believe God for God to heal our mechanics and our yes. vehicles. Yes. Now, whether you believe this or not, one time I was really, really hot. I've told this story before. I was really, 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 really hot coming in. I worked all day. It was 9, 9.30 at night. I'd driven in. I looked down there and I had a flat on my truck. I said, oh, I gotta be up at five. I gotta pick my crew up at six. It's so hot. Summertime, I gotta get up. Now I gotta get up early and fix that flat. I said, Lord, I just can't. I gotta go to bed. So I went there and went to bed. I woke up, went out the next morning and that tire was fixed. Man. Now Debbie went over that night and she, she fixed it for me. <laughs> I don't know if the angles went, but the air was, that tire and that treader was fully inflated and I didn't have to fix the tire. Somebody say amen. amen. See, there's, when you don't get upset because things are going bad and you just keep using faith when things aren't going rough instead of throwing a fit. See, faith is not throwing a fit when things are going bad. Isn't it? You just quit throwing fits, you'd be walking in faith. Why would I not throw in faith? Well, you're throwing fits all the time. Everything's didn't good. That's why I told Jamie, she's out there helping me out there. She's not used to being on the heat like that. We, I took her out here just a month ago, and it was like 90 degrees at noon. And she, we worked till 5. And she's going, how do you do this? I, I can't take this. I got to get in the sun. You know, I said, I, I said, no. <laughs> so I, and she'd get frustrated because she was hot. And I watched her. I was so proud of her. 
that day, I said, if you get that hot, you stop. Isn't that simple? Go get you some water, sit in the shade, and drink Gatorade if it takes 15 minutes so you don't hurt yourself, you don't get a heat stroke, and cool off. And then don't go so fast and learn to pace yourself throughout the day. Right? Well, faith is that way. You, you got to pace yourself. You got to learn what you can do, what you can't do. And when you're forced to do something you can't do, that's where you got to say, well, Lord, I just believe you for your grace. But a lot of times, faith isn't that hard. Sometimes you don't even need a, to use a lot of faith on things. Because it's, just, it's just part of life. You just have to just kind of just do what you got to do. But you incorporate faith in your everyday life, amen, and let faith work where it needs to be, be faith. And that's how you develop faith. Faith is not some, some far out something like that. Are, are you listening to me? I hope this is helping you. Yeah. Sowing good seed on a regular basis, I said this earlier, is critical. I wish y'all would hear me. This is the word for this church right now. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Always abounding. Keep sowing good seeds continually. Everybody say continually. continually. It's critical right now that you... The Bible, the, the, then I said, well, there'll be a lot of losers, big losers, and a lot of big winners. You're going to have to decide if you're going to be a loser or a winner. So what happens when you sow good seed continually, you reap where gaps appear in your future. In other words, there's time when you... If you don't do what's right all the time, they're going to have gaps where there's not a, a reaping. Is that right? Yes. If you will do everything you can to do what's right all the time, then God says you're not just reaping to get back what's right, but you're reaping what? The God can do what's right all the time. Yes. Everybody say he is. is. Y'all ain't catching this yet. If you do what's right all the time, you will allow God to do what he can do He'll do right all the time. Amen. If you're just jacked up and your faith is phony, you're just, a, just, a, just a playing games with God, he says, okay, Bow, I can't help you. Right. But if you're just sincere, you make all kinds of mistakes and be, be an absolute dummy at times, but you're, 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 you're still doing what's right. You know, when you mess up, you fess up. You, you fix things. Right. Just fix it. And you do that, then God can fix it. And God can do right. Amen. So it's important we continue to do right. From Forget about what you did yesterday. But I can fix it today. And if you have that attitude, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to confess my sins. I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going I'm to be faithful to God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe He is. And I'm going to do everything that's unto Him all the time. Then you're sowing seed for the future. Sure, you're sowing good seeds that you'll reap on your own. You are. And you're, you're, but you're also reaping that God will help you. And He'll do what's right even when you're not doing right. He loves you in spite of your doing wrong. Yes. He wants to bless you even when you're really messing up. Yes. You need to be blessed in your bad days as much as you, you need to eat when it's, you're doing wrong. Yes. Don't you? You need to pay your bills when you're doing wrong. Yes. And God doesn't want you suffering all the time. Every time you make a mistake, you've got to get beat up every time. Jesus gives you grace. Grace isn't a, a license to sin, but grace gives you an opportunity when you mess up, you fess up, and those gaps you have are being taken care of because you're being honest in your faith towards God. You can, I'm going to give you a scripture now. You all, all going to listen? Hebrews chapter 6. Let's look at it. In verse 9. I'm reading from the Living Bible. This will help you. I'm just going to prove what I told you about these gaps being taken care of. I am confident... You are producing the good fruit that comes along with your salvation. What's Paul saying? I really, I'm confident that you're producing. I'm confident that God's grace is working in your life. You're producing the good fruit that comes along. Everybody say, comes along. Everybody say, good fruit comes along with my salvation. Good fruit comes along with my salvation. With your salvation, God produces good fruit. You're connected to the vine, aren't you? He's a vine. I mean, you're the vine. He's a vine. You're the branches. He produces fruit in you, does he not? So I'm confident that you are producing the good fruit that comes along with your salvation. For God is not unfair. He's not unrighteous, the King James says. How can he forget your hard work for him or forget the way you used to show your love for him and still do by helping his children? How can he forget that? Is God going to throw you out because you made a mistake or you just messed up? He knows that you've been serving him. You've been faithful to him. You're making some mistakes along the way. You're not doing everything perfectly, but you love people. You love God. You're, doing, you're fulfilling the commandments of love. You're doing what's right. You're at your church. You're supporting. You're tithing. You're giving. And you're doing the things that need to be done to encourage your pastor, encourage people. You're promoting the gospel. Verse 11. Are, and we are anxious that you keep right on. Everybody say, keep right on. 
we're excited. We're also, you know, we're, we're, we, we want you to realize, look, just keep on loving others. Keep on loving others as long as life exists. What's he saying? God can produce the good fruit that comes along with your salvation, but you've got to just keep on doing what's right so that you will what? Be able to get your full reward. Full reward. Full reward. Why? Because all those gaps where you messed up, you confess those sins. Jesus took care of that. He covered the blood. So now all the good things that you did, He's reward you for everything you've ever done for Him. There's a full reward awaiting you if you just trust and walk in faith. Amen. Faith is not about you. It's about Him. He's a rewarder. He's a rewarder. He's a rewarder. Those who, who just sincerely, diligently throws us off. It makes us feel like we have to really work hard. We should work hard, but diligently is not a good King. It's a King James word, but it's better that we, that we are sincerely walking with Him. We're being real with Him. We're not playing games. One translation kind of says it that way. So, if we'll be faithful, Paul says, I'm confident you, you receive the reward you have. And if you just keep doing what you, and keep doing it the wrong as you live the rest of your life. Everybody say, as long as you live the rest of my life, I'll receive my full reward. Now, that's what faith is all about, isn't it? Yes. Faith should produce, shouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, we know God produces. But faith is a thing that God uses to produce. We know that. Okay. Amen? So faith does not come also by association. Listen to me. You don't have faith because you know Dennis, or your Dennis is your pastor, or you go to Crosswind Church. You don't, know, you don't have faith because you, you like to watch Copeland on TV or watch Jimmy Swagger. You don't have faith. But you, don't, you, you, you don't get faith by association. It doesn't come to you just because you're hooked up with people who are in faith. Right. Well, my pastor believes God. Well, that's good, but what about your faith? Yeah. Amen. I learned that going to Bible school, watching Brother Hagin. I realized that I, uh, Brother Hagin, all these great pens, you know, Lester Summerall come in there. I, when, I, when I'm out there in the trenches, I can't say in the name of Lester Summerall or let Summerall's faith work for me. I have to be, develop my own faith. God knows how many hairs are in this man's head, and they're getting uh, fewer by the day, it looks like. <laughs> He's still handsome, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, 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 and good looking too. That's right. You see, God knows all about where 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 He is in His life, and God knows that He's placing God's His word in His heart in certain places. He's applying truths in His life. So what happens is He can't make it work for his wife always, he has to make it work for him. Right. You have to develop your own faith. The just shall live by faith. They got to they trust in Jesus for themselves. They have to develop the way God can work for you. God doesn't work for me the same way he works for, for Jan. I've had to learn that because Jan is a different person. It took me years to understand that Jan doesn't always do the things the way I do it. It's the same faith, but he uses faith and faith is personal in it. She, she uses different utensils and different ways she believes God than I do. She has a different vehicle. I'm glad she has a different vehicle, a lot better looking vehicle than I have. Amen? She's, she's, she's driving a Cadillac all the time. You know, so I, 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 I try to put my old pickup truck faith on her, but she's driving a Cadillac. Do you know what I'm saying? And you don't you drive a Cadillac like you drive a four-wheel drive out in the pasture, do you? So everybody has their own level of faith. And it, 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 what do you say? As he gives us the measure of faith. Measure of faith that you need right. for you. You're different than anybody else. So you can't have faith by association. Let me show you. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. You all okay today? Yes. In verse 37 of chapter 17, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion. We know the story of, of, of David. He was out there feeding, I mean, taking care of the sheep, and the lions would come, and the, the bear would come, and he would take his, his uh, slingshot out, and he would, I mean, he'd grab the bear, you know, by the beard, and, and he, was a, he, was, he used his faith. He learned how to use a slingshot out there. So he was, and God worked with him in his slingshot. God will take who you are and use what you have Amen. and do great miracles through you. Amen. Your style. He gave you a style to believe your style. You have different gifts than somebody else does. So the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion, the paw of the bear, will deliver me from the hand of, of this Philistine, speaking of Goliath. Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and, and bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on the sword over the tunic and tried to walk around because he was not used to them. He says he was smart. He says, I cannot go in. 
I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. So he took them off. He took his staff in his hand. He chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, and approached the Philistine. What did he do? He didn't take any shortcuts. He knew, he knew, how, he, he knew how God was with him out there in the, in the wilderness by himself. Can you imagine a 14, 15, 16 year old kid out there uh, at night by himself with, with these wild animals out there? thieves out there, and he's out there taking care of these sheep. He had to learn to hustle for himself and had to trust God. Somebody say amen. amen. And when you learn to hustle for yourself out there by yourself, it's just you and God out there, then when, when, the, tr when the struggle comes, you've got your own faith. You've got your confidence. I can do this because God has shown me I can do it in the past. I can do it today. Yeah. He'll do it again. Amen. Everybody say he'll do it again. You have to have your own level of faith. So faith is personal. That's my other point. Faith is very personal. You don't get it by association. The sons of Siva. Turn to Acts 19 real quickly. You know the sons of Siva? These, the Siva was a, a, a priest, a Jewish priest. And these guys were all jacked up trying to be, uh, what's that word I'm trying to look for? The, the uh, exorcists. They were trying to be spiritual and we were cast devils at everybody. They were really in the flesh and doing a lot of crazy things. So what did they do? They'd heard Paul preach and the Bible said through the hands of Paul and uh, uh, many miracles and he took even handkerchiefs from his body and they were healed. So they, they just saw tr Paul do great things. So they went to, to cast the devil out of this, this guy that was all messed up and let's read the story. I adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Everybody say whom Paul preaches. Paul preaches. To come out. Now, you, you ain't going to be able to, I adjure you by Jesus who Dennis preaches. Uh -huh. You better adjure me Dennis who I know, and, and, and who, who Jesus who I know personally. Yes. Amen. Amen. Who, who Paul preaches to come out. Seven sons of Sita were doing this. But when they tried it on a man possessed by a demon, the demon replied, I know Jesus, I know Paul, but who are you? The devils don't care who you are. Everybody say, He is. He is. Everybody say, He is. He is. Jesus is Lord. God could care less about who Paul, I mean, the devils could care less about who, who, you know, they knew Paul, but look, who are you? They knew Jesus, but who are you? See, Paul established his own faith, hadn't he? Yes. These guys were trying to cheat, do shortcuts, and believe. You, you can't, you got to pay your dues, and you got to come and develop. you got to come and be faithful to God on your own. Yes. You have to learn to be here and to hear the Word of God. This sermon today, if you'll listen to this sermon today, this will be in your foundation for the rest of your life. This sermon will be. Yes. About simple faith. It'll be easy. You'll remember this sermon the rest of your life. If you don't remember it, the, the Holy Ghost will bring it to your remembrance when you need to do it. And these are things you're putting in your computer. You're putting in your heart. Amen. So they lost their britches because they were trying to operate by borrowed faith. He actually, they were actually uh, beaten and were, uh, were, uh, were, took their clothes off and badly injured, it says. So another thing, too. What, what is faith when things are getting really, really tough? When things really get tough in your house, what, 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 what is faith all about? When you're, when, well, let me say this to you this way. When, you're, when your genuine faith, everybody say genuine faith, genuine begins faith. to wane, then what happens to you? Fear comes in, doesn't it? Right. The enemy begins to, to see the weakness in your life. So as people say, well, I, if I would just follow Jesus, you know, the devil's after me because I'm following Jesus. Well, if you're following Jesus, you're okay. You'll overcome him. But if you're not following Jesus, and you were following Jesus one time, but you start backing off, as your faith wanes, then you're going to see an increase in fear. You're going to see an increase, and Satan operates by fear. Is that right? So what does he do? He does his best to overcome you by bringing bad situations in your life, bad circumstances in your life. He doesn't waste his time always on people that are walking in victory. Now, he'll try to take them out, but they're not going down if they're walking with Jesus. They may go through a tough time, but God always delivers them through them all. But when you're weak, and don't get so spiritual. A lot of the devil's after me because I'm doing so much. No, he's after you because you're, you're acting like a dummy. And you're overwhelmed all the time. Oh, I'm Mr. The devil's after me. Oh, no, you're not. You're not in faith. You're not. You're after. You're not in faith. You're saying the devil's after me. The Bible says to resist him, and he'll flee from you. First time somebody tells me, well, I'm just serving God, and the devil's at me. You ain't serving God. Not like you should. You're not walking in faith. Because faith says, resist him. Submit yourself to God and resist him, right? And he will flee. You're not submitting yourself to God. You're submitting yourself to your own self-pity. 
You own abilities. My abilities ran out, so the devil's after me, and I can't do nothing about it. No, get resisting. Bible says, uh, the, the, what? No weapon formed against you will prosper. Right. That's what faith says, doesn't it? But when you let faith get down, what happens? He comes in with bad circumstances. Turn, turn to Psalm 91.3. You should all memorize, or at least look at this. I'm reading for the message. It's a little slangy because I want you to see it in its impact. But it's good to learn it in the King James. In Psalm 91.3, it says, that's right. He rescues you from hidden traps. Everybody say hidden traps. Yeah. There's snares sitting out there. You're not going to walk down that road because you, you, you don't, you're not going to be... When you're walking with Jesus, he removes the low places. He exalts the valleys. Amen. He lays down the mountains. He's walking. And there's things that are happening. If you do get into a trap, he always delivers you. Amen. Amen. But when you get off and get down and your faith is waning, then there's traps. He's, those traps have been there, but you've been walking in faith. Now you've taken a little step away from faith. You've gotten some areas where there's minefields. There's places the devil, he can't, he can't afraid you in those areas where... Where you're walking with God. But if you even sidestep for a minute. And that's what happens. We get off a little bit. Have a bad day. The devil knows we have a bad day. And he, he, and he gets you to sway off. Just a little off the track. You might not be missing God very much. All of a sudden everything. All hell breaks out against you. Yes. What do you do then? You, you read Psalm 91, 3, and you believe it. That's right. He rescues from hidden traps, shields you from deadly hazards. His huge outstretched arms protect you. Under them, you're perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. Fear nothing. Everybody say, fear nothing. Fear nothing. Not wild wolves in the night, nor flying arrows in the day. Not disease, not disease. Everybody say, not disease. Not disease. Missy, say, not disease. Not disease. Not disease that prowls through the darkness. Not disaster that erupts at high noon. Even though others succumb all around, drop like flies right and left, no harm will even graze you or phase you. Somebody say amen. amen. Why? Because you are going to use your faith. When things come against you, I had 10 flats one day. And I, had, I finally said, I put my foot down. I said, you spirit of destruction. You're making a fool of me trying to make me look good in front, bad in front of my rancher, uh, employer. And I, I'm, I'm tired of, of having to do that. I just bind you right now. This isn't just, this isn't just something that's... This isn't just something was happening 10 flats in one week. This was something that the spirit of destruction. God taught me, he said, there's a spirit of destruction coming against you. So when things start breaking down my property, I just say, stop it. Whoop, I'll fix these things. But look, let me tell you, I, I bind the spirit of destruction. I command you, Satan, get your hands off my property. Yes. I plead the blood of Jesus over my property. And, Jesus, and I fix what's broken. And I, and I see God heal some things too. Amen. I've seen God heal all kinds of equipment of mine. And it's when I finally stood up and said, I've had enough of this. I, I'm going to stop. And I'm out there trying to fix it. All there ain't nothing to fix. It's already been fixed. But I'm out there doing what I've got to do and not whining about it. Yes, yes. I'm fixing what's broken. I'm doing the work. I'm out there. And I didn't whine one time. I mean, I was, well, I did, I did whine one time. I did whine some. And that stuff backed up my face. Oh, my. Jan said this. I said, don't talk to me right now. Because it splashed. And when you're hot, you're going, <sighs> so that's all I'm going to say to you. And she's out there saying, you okay? Don't talk to me. You don't, why don't I ask if you're okay when you're under there? No, I'm not okay. I got poop in my body and my poop splashed in my mouth. I'm, I'm, my heart's racing about 200 my, um, times per, per second. I mean, per, per second, not many, yeah. No, I'm not okay, but I'm going to make it. Amen. Amen. And you just fix what needs to be fixed. And I'll get a rotor rooter and get all the rest of it out there. And I finally went up there and he says, hey, just get some of this. They have some treatment stuff you can do. It. So if you've got a clogged up club, just get some treatment. And sure enough, it's got a big flow in it right now. So somebody say amen. amen. And I'm okay. I had a bad day. I got it fixed. I'm okay. Everybody say, Dennis is okay. Jim, okay. would you like to kiss me? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Teach her one. When faith is a low level, fear and unbelief is elevated. Everybody understand that. Say, when my faith is low, faith is low. Fear, fear and unbelief, and unbelief will, rise up. will rise up. That's a part of life. Yes. Well, I wonder what's going on. Just... Calm down. <laughs> what did your, your daughter say? Your granddaughter say to you? Oh, okay. Mimi, calm down. When your faith is low, your fear and unbelief is elevated. How, what do you do? You calm down. You realize that Jesus is. Amen. He's a rewarder of those. Watch me. 
The Jilly seek him. No weapon formed against me will prosper. I can do all things through Christ. I'm complete in him. You see what I'm saying? Faith doesn't go, oh, what do I do? Faith starts speaking the words. Faith starts fixing what needs to be fixed in the spirit realm as well. Faith is also a confession in it. You confess your mouth and believe in your heart that God, we didn't have a chance to get into all that. But faith Start saying the right thing. Start creating in your world. In Job chapter 3 verse 35, what I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace. I have no quietness. I have no rest, but only turmoil. A lot of people live that way all their lives. Yeah. They have turmoil, continually, drama continuing in their life because they're not walking in faith. You want to get rid of the drama in your life? Start walking in faith. Faith works by love. If you like drama, you're not loving people either. You're just all about you. Oh, these bad things happen to me. And you're always about bad things happen to you. You got drama, drama. Your faith will not work because it's always about you. Everybody say, Jesus is. Jesus. I must believe that God is. He's a reward of those who diligently seek him. Get yourself out of the equation. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Somebody say amen. amen. The Bible says deny yourself. Deny yourself. If you're going through some type of bad or say, Lord, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not letting this bad situation. I'm denying my right to whine or complain. I thank you that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you can begin to, to bring these things back into balance in your life. Peter was also seemed to also zero in. He had, he had moments where he was high with God. He's walking on the water one minute. What did he do? He got his eyes off of Jesus. He started looking to the storm, looking at the wind. And Jesus came along and he reached out and caught him by the arm. And they walked back to the boat together. When things are, you know, that's another thing I, I'm going to say this to you. I, I talked to this about to, to Shara. Sometimes when things are going well, that's dangerous waters too. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Sometimes it's more dangerous. The children of Israel, God would bless them all of a sudden and forget, they'd forget God. Okay, I've come to church now. God bless me. I don't need this church anymore. I mean, I've got, I got what I needed. I've got my new job. i got this. I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. Well, a guy come to our church one time and he, he uh, 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 I prophesied it the, the, day, the week before. There was a, there was a, uh, a ball of fire. He hit, uh, uh, he hit a, uh, put a, a screwdriver into a, big transformer deal and he touched his electricity and he just exploded. He was burnt, third degree all over. Burnt meat to his, to his bone and his, in his chest. His, his nose was burnt off. His ear lobes were burnt off and we went and were with him at the burn ward there in San Antonio and we just kept speaking the word of God over him and God grew back his ear lobes. God grew back his face. He didn't have any scars. He, his made the, the, the colonel that worked there Nurse can't stand this. Would you pray for me? I've never seen anything like this in my life. Whatever you did for this man, he's healing up. His things are growing back on his face. He's never seen anything like this. Would you pray for me? And, I pray for, and she's out there crying, me praying for her husband and her. And she's a colonel and she's saluting people while she's crying, talking to me about. I mean, it's amazing, the, the testimony. Well, after he got back and was healed, and when he, he, he uh, had this big settlement. It was like a four, $400,000 settlement, $500,000 settlement. And he said, well, I know I should pay the tithe off this settlement, which would be $45,000, but I've never given that money. I've never had this kind of money in my life. I'm not giving that to the church. I said, well, that's up to you. He says, besides then, I needed the church back then, but I don't need the church right now. Right. Right. He's not served God from that day on. He forgot God. Yes. God. God blessed him. His kids have been messed up. Alcohol problems. His wife's been messed up. Because what? When in, in your prosperity, you can't forget God. Right. Amen? Amen? So when you begin to get a little success, you've got to go back to the basics that he is. It's not me. I'm looking at me, how wonderful I am, how wonderful I'm finally walking in faith. Look how anointed I am. I, I've been successful. I've been a big, big failure. And I learned to just keep doing what I'm supposed to do, success or failure. Somebody say amen. amen. That way you're not roller coasting all the time like Peter was. You're not going up and down. Faith is constant. The just, the just shall lead, live by faith. And now, so, if we're going to walk in faith, we have to look, the Bible says, look into Jesus, the author and finish for our faith in Hebrews chapter 12, too. Let me conclude with things. Let me say three things to you. We'll close with this here pretty quick. Maybe give you one more scripture after this. Three things that, that faith does. Faith sees. Everybody say faith sees. Faith sees. See, God sees the result 
in the spirit world before you ever see it in the natural world. Right. The end result can be seen in, the na seen in the spirit before it appears in the natural. Everything you see was created from the spirit world. Faith also speaks, the second thing faith, faith speaks, the word of God. When you speak the word of God, you're invoking God's creative power into your situation there. So if you're going to walk in faith, you're going to have to speak God's word out. I alluded to this a while ago. The Bible says that all things are held together by the word of Jesus' power, by the word of his power. So if you're going to see, operate in faith and expect the reward, you're going to have to start saying the results that you need to see and speaking the word. And you are actually taking the recreative power, the creative power of God and using that for God to create in your life, to re recreate in your life the things that were stolen and, and the things that need to be restored in your life. So faith sees, it speaks, and also faith acts. If you're, gonna, if you're not going to act on what you know is true, then you're just throwing that thing. It's just going to be aborted. It's just laying out there dead. Your action is what kicks off many times the thing. If your faith is going to work, you're going to have to be a, a person of your action. If you say something, you do what you say. Amen. Amen. You're honest. You're being diligent. So it brings to life. It makes alive that which was seen and that which is spoken as well. Uh, turn out, to, we'll close with this scripture here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. You know, this isn't a great fancy sermon, but I, I think you're getting a lot of good faith nuggets out of this. It, 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 let me say it this way. God, everybody say God is. God is. He was or is before the world was. He will be here after this world is destroyed. Everything you see with your natural eye or your taste or by your senses is temporary. But that which you can't see is permanent. Yes. So which is more real, the, the permanent spiritual world or the natural world? The spiritual world is more real than the natural world. It has more lasting power. It's eternal. Somebody say amen. amen. What does faith do? It gets you out of the natural, out of the temporal, out of the temporary realm and moves you into the realm of the eternity. He is the everlasting Father. Amen. He is the God, the Ancient of Days. He is the one. So when we think about faith, we got to realize that faith is constant because the spirit world is the real world. So let's look at it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. While we look not at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal or transient or temporary. That sickness, that problem with your finances, these things can be changed. But the things which are not seen are eternal or they last forever. So genuine faith has to take spiritual realities, right, that are real. And, and they're constant throughout eternity. These things are real. And it utilizes the things that are constant. Fear takes the things that are subject to change and makes it a part of your life. Sickness can destroy you, right? It's temporary. You're going to have a new body one of these days, aren't you? Yes. If you're concerned more about the temporary than, the, than the, 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 the eternal, so you have to realize that God has given you promises for the natural, but you have to take those things from the spirit realm. Paul describes the church, the body of Christ, as a pillar and foundation of truth. What does that mean? It means that's something that you anchor on. It's something that's real. What does the church do, the local church do? It brings you to a place where you can anchor on the realities of the Word of God. You're hearing God's Word every week on a daily basis. You're hearing what God's saying. You're, you're, you're applying those words. You're seeing, you're doing, you're, 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 you're working and, and being faithful. You're learning how to love each other. You're learning how to walk in love, which that's how faith works, by love. You're learning how to, to faith comes by hearing. You're learning all these processes about faith. And it's all the local church. It all starts right there. So faith, if you're gonna if you're gonna understand how faith is the foundation of faith. Now, if you can't, if you're gonna build faith, you have to have a strong foundation, don't you? You know, I was talked to Troy's ministry is starting to blossom out there in the rodeo world, but uh, the best way for his faith to really blossom is not because he's hooked up with Dennis right. or hooked up with Jan or hooked up right. with... No, he's hooked up to a yes. local church where he belongs. Right. Yes. Now, if he belongs somewhere else, that's okay, but he belongs here. Right. And while he's here, he's not out there. He can't be out there doing off the foundation. He stays true to the foundation of the local right. church. Yes, right. And you'll, then he'll do ten times more. That's right. 
hooked up to that local foundation, then he will. I've learned that. I learned whenever I got to be, I got to get get away from doing my own thing, it, it messed me up. So it's important that we start where the foundation is. So faith begins. This is the last thing I'll say about faith. It begins and ends. Its foundation is rooted at the local church. I make a vow to you and a promise to you that in the years to come, the months and years to come, I will do my best to stay true, to say things to you that will increase your faith so that you will actually begin to understand that he is and he's a rewarder and we expect you to be blessed. We expect you to hear what we're saying. We expect you to do what we're saying. We expect you to hear when I say it's time right now to what? Be steadfast. You're going to say I'm going to work on everything. I'm going to quit doing anything. I'm going to be steadfast. I'm going to start being the same. I'm going to do, I'm going to be, I'm going to do the little easy things that I need to do. And I'm going to be unmovable. No matter what happens, if the septic tank goes out and it blows back in your face, you're going to still be doing what you're supposed to be doing. If your car breaks down, I gotta put my car in the shop. I got I got an air conditioner out in my car. I, I don't like the way that sounds, the way they talk. They said, Well, it could be this. I said, well, Hey, I don't worry about it. Wait, wait till I get there. Amen. So, no matter what, you're gonna stay true to God, but it all starts right here. Amen. So, I want to remind you faith is God sets it up on His terms and not your terms. He is. Amen. Praise God. I'll let it go with that. Anybody need Jesus in your life today? Anybody need prayer today? We had some people we need to pray for. Your son is you know, still having some problems. We also, uh, I think, Lori, want to come up here. We'll pray for her mother. We pray for him, pray for